Our coverage of the American Farm Bureau National Convention, virtual convention this year, with the theme Stronger Together, it continues right now. Jim Bartles here as we continue on with our coverage of things that are going on and folks in Minnesota that this is touching. Of course, we've interviewed uh, several people so far doing all these on Zoom uh, videos. So the audio is on the radio and many of these are going on Facebook and on our websites throughout the Inkstead Minnesota Radio Network. Hi everyone, again, Jim Bartles here and our guest on this coverage and this report is Dennis Schmidt. Uh, Dennis, an active farmer. Uh, Dennis in the Nicollet County area, of course, and uh, past president of the uh, Nicollet County Farm Bureau. But Dennis, uh, more importantly, I think has taken in uh, many of the sessions here that have been going on with the virtual national convention. Dennis, welcome to our broadcast. Good to have you with us today. And I can see the sun shining in the background. Yeah, thank you very much, Jim. Yeah, what a beautiful day. I guess tomorrow might change. Huh? Yeah, you bet. Well, it's Minnesota, and you know what? We've had a pretty mild time so far, so that's okay. Yeah. Uh, a number of workshops that you took in. I wanted to touch base, get your quick thoughts on, on these. First one was a Washington update, and I, I talked to Amber Glazier about this earlier, about you know how the policies, what's going to happen based on what's going on with administration. What was your take on what they presented and talked about in the Washington update at the National Convention? Yeah, I think it was a good summary for us, um, at least taking a look at where things are at with the change in the presidency. And they had actually pre-recorded their session prior to the Georgia Senate situation, but that did get covered at, in the question and answer portion that now the control of the Senate is also democratic. Um, I think it was a good overview of some of the things that we may see as changes and, uh, but I think some good things to look forward to. Anything in, in mind, right? In particular, you're thinking of with the change and, and, you know, I'm not sure how much, and of course we're gonna have a, a new chairman of the ag committee as well. Part of what we look for, Colin Peterson uh, was not reelected. Anything uh, that you wanna mention in specific? I think one thing that's been a concern are the, uh, the fuel standards for the ethanol, the small, small refinery standards. And I think that's going to get, and that has not been in favor of the farmers and the ethanol industry, uh, how that was interpreted in the last administration. I do hope that that's going to get addressed a little bit more. And I actually do think that it will get um, addressed and maybe actually legislated the way it is intended to be. Okay, very good. Farm economy outlook. That was another one of the workshops you sat in. I'm curious on this because I think we can all say it probably looks better today than it did a year ago. It looks so much better. Um, but the interesting thing of this one too is what we all went through in 2020. And I just retired from a from a career as a farm management person. So I've spent the last uh, 38 years looking at farm management things, still review my own numbers, but I know when I look at my 2020 data, uh, it is just amazing how much of the, well, at this point, income is actually being derived from government payments. Uh, we had the COVID different, different types of payments. First, we had payments because of the, um, the tariff war. And then we went into COVID-1 and 2. And now we're looking at a COVID-3 um, CFAP programs. So, you know, we had a lot of income coming in from those sources, which looked like the only chance for us to make a profit until the commodity prices have taken off. And uh, now we're looking at a whole different ball game. So often I've heard it said, farmers really don't want government aid. They just want fair market value opportunities. Uh, that's what they really prefer to have. And maybe we're gonna be back in that world again. Well, I, I really kind of hope so that uh, I, I honestly, well, I filled on, in on your KNUJ Farm Forum program last week and I even made the comment in there is that I kind of wish that uh, we wouldn't be seeing the COVID-3 or the CFAP-3 program 
because we had a lot of small businesses in this whole uh, this whole COVID thing that have struggled very hard because of uh, of what's happened to them, the shutdowns and everything else. Danny, uh, one of the workshops you talked about, and I, again, in general, I think overall the comments been for a virtual convention with, you know, whatever, 7,000 registered participants, it's come off pretty smooth is what I'm told. You talked about earlier about one of the sessions and this caught my eye also about uh, burgers and whatever. Get, give us a background on that. Well, this was a real interesting one. Uh, one gal that I do follow on Facebook is uh, she goes by the name of Farm Babe. And at one point here last year, Burger King came out with some new marketing and their marketing was dealing with the fact that they were going to be feeding their beef cattle um, lemongrass hay because it the cows would then emit less gas. <laughs> a little, little methane through the back end, uh, right? A little methane, yes. Yeah. And this is something that Farm Babe immediately went directly to one of the top people in the Burger King uh, in that corporate world. And uh, she really got results. She actually invited them to come out to farms in both Wisconsin and Iowa to actually view and see what it really was like to raise beef cattle. And the end result of this has been really a very positive thing. And that is that Burger King has retracted and, and kind of gone back on what they were intending to do. Um, and all because of someone advocating very strongly and positively for what was taking place. Uh, in many cases, we see people kind of uh, trying to degrade uh, agriculture and the farm babe just did a tremendous job on this. Dennis, so it, it was quite a conversation. So often, uh, you know, with all the farm organizations, I think they all know and understand the importance of sharing the word of what's really going on in agriculture, advocating for the product and the property, because sometimes I'll just say the city folk don't understand and don't re realize the real story of what's being done, how they're taking care of their resources and all of those things. Yes, very, very much so. All right, last thing, uh, Zippy Duval, president of American Farm Bureau uh, and Miss Ford, who's uh, president of Land Lakes. They had a, a conversation I, that might've been on Monday already. Uh, any takeaway on what you heard there? I, I think what really came out of it, Lando Lakes, I believe this year now is 100 years old. Um, and so they are just a couple years behind Farm Bureau as far as organizing as a cooperative. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I think what really came out of it is um, the direction of where they're going as, as a company, how they need to always address the, the consumer, the, the consumer needs, uh, the marketplace. Um, I've had a chance to listen to Beth Ford a number of times, uh, a couple of years ago on a tremendous program that I, it was a podcast that I happened to catch. Actually, my wife first heard it. And then I went back and listened to this podcast that, uh, that really Beth Ford was a part of that. And she's a very knowledgeable person. I think a very good leader for one of the largest farm co-ops that we have. Very good. Dennis, we're going to let you go. We know you've got some duties to take care of with grandchildren and so forth yet today as well. By the way, I see your lovely wife behind you. So make sure you say hi to her. Yep. She's waving. Okay. There we go. And uh, for those watching on Facebook and our website, we'll get a, a part of that as well. Uh, Dennis, thanks a lot. I know that uh, uh, even talking to Karen Schaefer, the, uh, executive director of Minnesota Farm Bureau and all the folks at the state office. Uh, they're very thankful to work for the work that you've done and been involved in in Farm Bureau. So thanks for that. And thanks for your time today on, on our broadcast. Thank you, Jim. Danny Schmidt is with us. It's uh, Ingstead, Minnesota Radio Network. Our American Farm Bureau coverage continues. Stay tuned. Again, the theme is Stronger Together. Jim Bartles reporting. <laughs>